Hello YouTube, this is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard and in this video I am going to answer a question, a question about uh, tapping into your higher self, channeling your higher self, meeting your higher self, communicating with your higher self, having your higher self, you know, here's something to consider. Actually becoming your higher self. So those are some things to meditate on. These are This is a very huge subject that will probably take up many different videos, but I just want to get things started. And as you can see here, I've got a link that I haven't promoted in a long time, which is journeys.thunderwizard.com. So we'll talk about that. But that's one of the fastest ways to connect directly to your higher self and your spirit guide, your spirit teacher, etc., etc. So let me get right into the question, which was left on the channel, of course, by one of my uh, one of my YouTube channel subscribers. All right. So the the question is, sorry, I have to get to it. The question is, question for Mahadeva. It doesn't say which Mahadeva. I wanted to chime in, me, myself, the human Mahadeva, the teacher. So that's what I'm going to do first. Perhaps I will channel um, uh, the other guys, Mahadeva, the Ascended Master, and Ophiuchus, the Thunder Lizard, uh, at another time. But for right now, I want to get the conversation started based on my experience. So the question is, how do we connect to our own ascended master self? All right, that is a very good question, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, would like to know about that. So the first thing that is important to know is that you are already connected to your ascended master self. I like to go off of the assumption based on my personal experience, and I think uh, I've seen others say the same thing, that your higher self is actually your future self. Your, or another way to look at it is your higher self is you right now in the perfect expression timeline. So if you're wanting to connect with your higher self, then, well, let's talk about timelines for a second. So according to physics, we are in one particular timeline right now. You're experiencing one of infinite numbers of possible timelines. And according to physics, if you can imagine it, there, you know, whatever version of yourself you can imagine, positive or negative, that has to be happening somewhere. So obviously we don't want to uh, tap into the version of ourself where we're a homeless beggar or, uh, you know, in jail or, you know, something like that. We want to tap into a version of ourself that is more appealing, that is better. Perhaps you want to be king of the universe. Perhaps you want to be super successful. Perhaps, you know, whatever it is. You want to be president of the United States. Those are options as well. I myself, where I would like to be, would, is my experience of Mahadeva, the Ascended Master. And he is my future self, or if we don't want to look in terms of linear time, he is the highest, most, quote, perfect expression of me. So that's where I'm going to be most happy, is in that, uh, that um, frequency. Now, he lives in the nexus of all timelines, which means that he has access to all of the versions of himself and he can experience and enjoy all of that. And he can also, you know, he doesn't have to be limited by, you know, a limited timeline. He's in all timelines. He's in uh, all dimensions. And he is in the greatest amount of bliss. So he reminds me, and of course the name is Mahadeva. He reminds me of Shiva, who is meditating on top of the Himalayas, completely, totally absorbed in the bliss of his own self-awareness. So that's what I like about Mahadeva. What um, I am uh, 
beginning to meditate on is the idea of actually working to become him in this life. So first and foremost, you don't need to connect to your higher self. You are connected to your higher self. The real question is, are you able to download, channel, transmit that best uh, version of yourself through all of the noise, all the static that's coming from your story? So the first thing that I think is important to know is to be able to be aware of what is your story. What are the unconscious, self-destructive, self-limiting uh, narrative that you keep telling yourself based on, you know, who you're trying to please in this life on a deep unconscious level, your past life, all that kind of stuff. So the most important thing to do, base um, practice in my human limited experience, I'll be interested to hear what Mahadeva, the Ascended Master, has to say. But for me, the most important thing is to continue to do the work to focus on being clear on what is your uh, greatest joy. So, how do you know that you're not living your greatest joy? Are you in physical pain? Like, do you have a, a chronic pain that keeps coming up? Is there a physical pain that comes up when you do practice it? This is, question has come up a few times. Uh, in fact, there was one person who, unfortunately, uh, at the moment is no longer... Um, able to comment on the channel because they there was something that I said that pushed this person's button and they started getting abusive so I I blocked them from the channel but what was interesting was I asked this person are you doing the practices and they said there was one practice that they were doing uh, one of the meditations but they were having they were having results that were for whatever reason I won't get into uncomfortable for them and so they stopped doing it. What that tells me is that that person was in conflict. Again, the greatest conflict is, uh, and it will manifest in some way having to do with when you go towards your highest self, there will be some shame that will come up. There will be some confusion, fear. All of these are all symptoms of the same deep conflict. One of them is physical pain, physical pain, emotional pain, uh, you know, uh, pain in terms of uh, finances. These things are all signs that you are in conflict, that there is an old um, narrative that you're trying to follow while at the same time trying to follow your soul. They are in conflict with each other and it creates um, conflict blocks those kinds of things. So the same basic stuff that I teach, that is essential. You have to be completely honest. The most, the easiest and most direct path towards accessing your higher self is to know what your soul wants. Now, having said that, that is uh, not something we can all do instantly perfectly. So, Having access to your higher self is great because you can give yourself your own best advice. So imagine if you were to talk to yourself, you know, however old you are, 10, 20, 30 years ago. You have, you would know what you would tell yourself. Like I know some of the things that I would tell myself. If I were to magically go back, I would tell myself, hey, you know, date that girl or hey, you know, don't take that job. Hey, you know, you don't need to worry about this. Um, I would I would tell myself one basic thing I would tell myself is stop worrying so much about all of that and enjoy your life. You know, those kinds of really basic things. So you can imagine that your higher self in that perfect timeline has the ability to communicate to you. But you have to be able to open up that connection because they're they're ready you know your higher self is ready and waiting to communicate with you question is can you hear them now having a desperate need being desperate 
So many people come after these things with a desperate need and a desperate fear. And that creates its own static, its own noise that gets in the way. So one of the things to do is to, is to be grateful for everything in your life right now that is something that you can be grateful for. Real simple things like, do you have clothes? Do you have a roof over your head? Are you able to breathe? Are you healthy? Do you have a car? You know, things like that. My um, soulmate who passed away, sadly, she, uh, unfortunately, she passed away from cancer. And I remember one day I came home and uh, she asked me how my day was. And I was going on and on about, you know, normal human stuff. And she said, without any judgment, she, she looked at me and she said, I wish I had your problems. Totally woke me up to go, wow. <laughs> you know, and that has stayed with me whenever I get wrapped up in, um, you know, uh, being uncomfortable or being sad or pissed off about something in my life that I want to be different. I remember her saying, I wish I had your problems. I don't have any problems in terms of health. I don't have any problems in terms of, you know, finances. I've got everything I need. Um, is everything exactly the way that I want? No. And I'm working towards creating that perf perfect lifestyle once again. But I have a lot to be grateful for. I mean, there's so much that I have to be grateful for that other people don't have. Wherever you are, there is something you can be grateful for. There's a lot of things you can be grateful for. And when you look at that, do you have clothes? Do you have food? Do you have a roof over your head? You know, uh, are you able to breathe? Is your heart functioning correctly? Are you, are you able to walk without crutches? Then you have far more than a lot of other people in the world. So that is something you can be grateful for. You start from there, from that st state of gratitude and a state of complete acceptance of yourself. Now, there's a reason why this link is up here because as I saw that question, I wondered, is there any other videos that I've done? And I realized that i had done some really phenomenal journey videos, shamanic journey videos. In fact, I was a little bit confused because one of my most viewed videos is the five steps to uh, a successful shamanic journey. But I've got this really great uh, video course on uh, shamanic journeys and they're guided. I guide you through the journey and one of them is to communicate with your spirit teacher. And it's a really fabulous journey and once you've learned that journey you can keep doing that. So there's one way. So go to journeys.thunderwizard.com. Um, it's, a, it's a very inexpensive uh, teaching um, video course. Go ahead and get started with that. Um, the other thing you can do is, again, be thinking about, you know, not be thinking about what you don't have. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that in the question, uh, as I'm meditating about it, perhaps this is my own projection, but I get I get the sense a lot of people are in this space as well, where there's this like, I can't do it. Why isn't it happening for me? What is it? And there's this desperation and this fear and all that stuff. And they have very real issues in their life. And they point at those issues and those issues then point back at them and make them feel like hey, I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm a, you know, and they want this magical fix. And so the desperation doesn't serve you. So again, drop the victim mentality, drop any feelings of desperation and start from a place of gratitude and then just simply ask. So I'll end this video uh, and we'll do more. We'll talk more about this, but you've got the first thing to do, which is the basic stuff. Go after your soul desire, become aware of what your internal uh, conflicts are and your blocks are to fulfilling or even knowing what your soul wants. And then the next thing I would recommend, of course, is to do the shamanic journey. That's one of the greatest ways to get past all of the conscious and unconscious clutter. So go there. So if, I, I guess I'm making a three step video. So step number three, here's something that you can do in your conscious waking mind, which I have found to be very powerful many times throughout my life. 
so specifically what you, this person is asking for let's let me make sure i have the exact language how do we connect to our ascended master self so the thing to do is to simply invite them to you now this is something i did in waking consciousness and i did it right there and i just simply lied down and I closed my eyes and I was thinking about how I wanted to start since I didn't have, you know, I'm in a stage of my life where I really don't have anything holding me back. I don't have any uh, responsibilities towards anybody else. I don't have any emotional connections that are holding me back. Um, all of the things that used to remind me, like, you know, my parents and uh, all those, all those things are gone now. I really am completely, totally alone in the world in a really positive way that allows me to wipe the slate clean and decide for myself who I am physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so because of that, I was aware of the feeling that I had, which was, I, I really want to start becoming that person. I really want to start becoming my greatest self and really begin to truly let go of all of the storyline that has brought me up to this point, all of the narrative. And um, so with that in mind, I started thinking about uh, Mahadeva. I was already aware that Mahadeva existed, that my future self in that perfect place, that nexus of all timelines, that he existed and he was real. And so I simply lied down and I closed my eyes and I said, I don't know if I said it out loud, but I may have said it out loud and silently, but I said, Mahadeva, I invite you into my body, into my mind, into my three-dimensional reality. I am willing to surrender and submit myself so that you can come into me and live through me. It was a very simple, mild request, and then I just let it go. And then what I noticed, about an hour later, I became aware that I was walking around with a smile on my face, and that I had this very subtle feeling of peace, serenity, and joy. And I went, I didn't feel that an hour ago. So it wasn't like I invited my higher self in and the sky parted and he appeared in front of me and there was a blast of light. None of that happened. And I've had this experience before. I've done rituals. I had a very specific question. This was about, I want to say, 15 years ago. I had a very specific question because I was just starting to create the channel and I was... Uh, using my knowledge that I had learned from Taoist masters and from African shamans. And I was really starting to delve deeply into my own ethnic shamanic heritage. And I was writing all of the, you know, the Thunder Wizard books, um, you know, rune books and uh, all that other stuff. And I was struggling with, hmm, can I bring these two uh, experience streams together. And so I asked, I, I, I closed my eyes and I may have even done a ritual and I asked the ascended masters of all of these varying ethnic traditions and I said, I would like to syncretize this information. Do I have your permission? And that was it. I asked that question and um, it was about 24 hours later and I was, you know, lying down watching television and all of a sudden i got this wave of blissful energy that just washed over me and i was like whoa what is this where is this coming from and then i got the subtle awareness that the answer is yes so they really wanted to get my attention but in both cases the recent one where i i asked mahadeva to merge with me to come into me to uh, help me to change to become more like him um, within an hour i started to feel this really 
subtle, blissful, peaceful energy. So what happens every time that I channel him, you know, I, for me, I do his mantra, Hong um, Namo Bhagavate Mahadevaya. I do his mantra, which then um, I feel very subtly, sometimes in the heart center, but I feel that very subtle, uh, peaceful vibration come over me, if you will. And I just simply speak from that. So that that's what Mahadeva brings. I don't know what your experience is going to be, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, step three is, don't see yourself as being separate. I'll just assume that you are already connected. And imagine yourself looking back on your past self. And if you turned to yourself, how would you interact with yourself? That's obviously how I would interact with me. I, I believe in freedom. I believe in people having their own space. And I'm, and I'm also, when I'm, you know, you, you don't know this because you know me from my Aruda Lagna self, my video self, but in personal relationships, I'm very subtle, you know, and, I, and I, I'm very uh, nurturing and I'm very tender with the people that I'm with. I've got a very light touch. And so that's how my higher self deals with me. So those are some tips. We will talk more about this, but I strongly recommend that you go to journeys.thunderwizard.com and do that shamanic, guided shamanic journey to meet your spirit teacher. And you can keep doing that. You know, if you're not able to, like me, I'm not always able to, you know, snap my fingers and go into that place and allow my higher self to come through. Sometimes I got too much noise going on. So shamanic journeys is a really good way to turn off the conscious mind and the noise in the conscious mind and um, really get some really powerful uh, communications and symbols. And so I recommend that as well. Journeys.thunderwizard.com. And uh, of course, go to the Warrior 90 Day Challenge if you want to have access to the most powerful unified energy practice on the planet. I am making that statement. I'm happy to be mistaken about that, but I, in my experience, I have not seen anything even come close. Um, we're still in the beginning of the month, so now's a good time to subscribe. You can simply click play, follow me as I do the energy practices, and um, if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. You got nothing to lose. So uh, and if you want the highest, most powerful uh, left hand path, magical shamanic energy practice, you can go to maoshan.thunderwizard.com. All right, that's it for me, guys. Uh, I sh will probably see you later on today. Maybe we'll talk about this subject again. And if you have any questions for me personally, Mahadeva the teacher, you can, in any of the video comment section, write a question to me. If you have one to my uh, future higher self, which is Mahadeva, the Ascended Master, you can, again, address a question to him in any of the video comment sections. If you want a very interesting, perhaps uh, humorous <laughs> response, you can uh, ask uh, Ophiuchus, the Thunder Lizard, uh, and ask any question to him. He's, he's quite a character. All right, that's it for me, guys. I appreciate you being there. I appreciate you, your continued persistence in, in uh, manifesting a better life for yourself. And I am here with you throughout this process. So I'll see you all a little bit later, and I look forward to your questions. Take good care of yourselves.